Welcome back to Metal Magic. Today we're going to talk about making parts from aluminum angle. Hi, I'm Paul Dye, and today I want to talk a little bit about aluminum angle. Most of what we talk about in this series so far has been working with sheet aluminum. But aluminum angles have a very important part in aircraft design and aircraft structure. And that structure is the key because aluminum angle used for aircraft is very different than what you buy at the big box stores. This is a piece of aluminum angle from a big box store. And if you look very, very closely at the end of it, you'll find that it has an exact right angle, both inside and outside. That's not very strong. If you take a look at a piece of structural aluminum from an aircraft, it has an inside radius. And that is where you get that strength to, to prevent these legs from opening up. So if you've got something that is, that is sharp on the inside versus curved and filleted on the, out, on the inside, you're, you're looking at a piece of aluminum not, to not put in your airplane. So I'm gonna get rid of that. And uh, for the rest of the day, we're gonna talk about structural aluminum. It comes in different sizes. Your kit is going to specify lots of different sizes. And the, the things you need to remember are basically the thickness of the piece, and that'll be given in a measurement. So this is uh, three-eighths of an inch all the way through. And then the length of the legs. Sometimes it's equal, sometimes you'll have one that's longer and shorter. So make sure that you identify the right part because you're gonna get a, a number of lengths of aluminum angle in your airplane kit. And you've got generally just enough to finish the airplane. So if you use the wrong piece at the wrong time, you're gonna be buying more aluminum. The other maxim that we always tell people is you're gonna get a, lo a lot of long pieces. We always say keep your long pieces as long as possible for as long as possible. You don't wanna suddenly decide to take the longest piece that you were given by your manufacturer and cut a six inch piece off of it because you may have just cut the piece that was intended to run all the way from the nose all the way to the tail for the longeron. And if you've cut that too short and you don't have a long enough piece, you can't splice it. Right? So keep your long pieces as long as possible, as long as possible. Anytime you need to cut a few inches, find the shortest piece you have in your box and cut it from there. So let's lay out a piece and show you some of the processes that we use to cut parts. So I'm just going to make up a part. We'll say, we'll say let's take something and make it about three inches long and uh, with a taper on one end. Now, because we have already used this for something else, or we've used a piece of it for something else, this end is not square. So the first thing you want to do is square it up. And the best way that I find is to use a T-square like or a, 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 a carpenter square, draw a nice straight line, and then flip it and draw a nice straight line on the other side. And that's going to be where we measure from. So now let's just take, an, an, and I like to measure along the spine. So let's say this is going to be three inches long. We'll make this three inches long, make a mark there. And now that I've got that length, I'm going to do exactly what I did before. Let's just transfer those marks. And now I have a three inch piece. Okay, so we're going to take that to the bandsaw and we're going to cut that off and, uh, and make our three inch piece. And then after that, we'll, we'll do a little tapering on it just to make it more complicated. Always remember, when you're using the bandsaw, hearing protection, safety glasses. And when you're cutting aluminum angle, it generally turns be it works best if you cut it, um, put it point up, if you will. Set your height so it's going to work. And you want to cut outside your lines because we'll then later sand to the lines.
Okay, so you can still see the remnants of the blue lines. That means we've still got our three inches plus just a little bit more. And we're gonna take that over to the sanding disc and fix that. So this is a fairly aggressive grit, probably an 80 grit on this disc. The glue tends to let loose over times. And if you start it up and it's not firmly attached, it flings it across the shop. So I just kind of pat it back into place. And now we're gonna take and use our square and slide this up again, square that off and sand it down to our blue line. Okay. And that gets hot. You may want to wear gloves when you do that. Okay, so we now have a, a three inch long piece of angle. And let's say the plans call for us to taper those ends a little bit. So if it's gonna tell you that you want, um, we'll, we'll make one end complicated and one end simple. So, so if you wanna just put a, a, a taper on, you say a 45 degree taper, that's simple. This is a one inch, so we'd come down here and go one inch, and we'd mark that. Unfortunately, that mark is useless because it's really hard to cut that on a bandsaw because you can't put it like this and run it through unless you put a block of wood underneath of it and then you're cutting your wood and it's a make a mess. So what you really want to do is to be able to run it through the bandsaw this way. So we need to make our mark there and we'll do that. And then we still have the problem because we can't get there can't get our 45 inch because, or our 45 degree because we can't get all the way to that back wall. So that's a problematic part of, part of what we're doing. So an easier way to do that, or one way to do it, is to actually not cut it at a 45 and then use the, uh, the grinding wheel to, to bring that down all the way to a 45 later. All right, that's just a complicated problem. Let's do something a little simpler. So let's say we just want to put up a 45 degree angle, but we want to put it from about the halfway point. That's easier. So we'll take and we'll, we'll measure, line that up on one inch. We'll find the half inch mark. And then we'll go out here to the half inch mark. And then we can draw our line. Okay, so that we'll take to the bandsaw and we'll cut. We'll come back to this cut later. Okay, back to our bandsaw. We're going to cut this at a nice 45, and again, we're going to cut outside of the line, and then we'll end up sanding to it. Okay, so see, we've left some material there. Now, we're going to go and we've left that material, we're going to sand that off, and we'll just do that by eye. Okay. Now, if that's the finished piece, we would then take it to our Scotch-Brite wheel to uh, do the rest. By the way, a little trick when you're working with with aluminum, if it starts getting a little warm and it's too warm to hang on to, you just have a little bucket of water here. Cool it back down, it cools it very, very quickly. So you'll see all the burrs. First thing we're gonna do is take our nice straight portion and we're gonna smooth off the end cuts. Okay, put a nice polish on the end. Then we're gonna lightly deburr the edges. You can see the burr reflecting there, and that goes away as we get that edge. And getting into that corner, I like to use the curved part of the wheel, and then we'll get the straight. And 
many times you don't want that little point sticking out there. So you can just round it a little bit and then round it a little bit there. And you have a nice part that you're going to be happy putting in your airplane. Okay, let's go back to this other end, the complicated cut. We want to just put, on this side, it looks very, very simple, and we could put it on a block of wood and run it through the bandsaw that way. But a, a more accurate way is to run it this way. But we have the problem of this thickness getting in the way of drawing the line. So let's do this. <clears throat> we know that we want to, we have a one inch piece, so we want to come out one inch here to get our 45. We mark that. And then we know that this is a, an eighth of an inch thick, and if you do the geometry, if you come back this way and measure an eighth of an inch to here, you can then draw a line there, which if projected will take us all the way out to that little vertex. Now if you're going to do something like this, I would recommend that you cut this end first, leave this a little bit long, and then cut the other simpler end to the proper length. That's the, the, the best way to get a very precisely made part. But now we have something that we can cut on the bandsaw and then we'll finish it on the angle, on the, uh, on the uh, sanding disc. Shaping aluminum angle is really a kind of a fundamental skill when you're building parts. A lot of the newer kits have almost all of the angle parts built and shaped for you already. But believe it or not, even in those kits, you're going to end up once in a while having to make one. So it's a good skill to acquire. You can do it without power tools, especially if you're just making one or two pieces, but the power tools make it a whole lot easier. Once again, thanks to Aircraft Spruce for sponsoring this series, and thanks to you for watching. I don't. Have you got some oops rivets? No. I've got oops rivets.